All right, let's look at a situation where we've got a circuit that includes current sources and let's see how we will use mesh analysis to solve it. So in this case, I want to find the mesh currents I A, I B, I C. In this case, I just arbitrarily define them all clockwise. Note I've got a 2 amp current source on the edge of this mesh. I've got a 1 amp current source that spans those two meshes. And then I've got resistors and a voltage source for the other elements. So how do we deal with a current source in mesh analysis? Well, in some ways this is kind of familiar with something you've already seen. If you've got a current source in mesh analysis, First of all, in order to write the KVL equation, if you include that current source in the KVL equation, you have to define a voltage variable across that current source. So if I've got some IS current source, I've got to define some voltage, I'm going to call it VS1. So we have to define an unknown voltage variable for any current source. So in this case, I've got two current sources. I've got to define a voltage variable if I'm going to write a valid KVL equation. So in this case, I'm going to call this VS1. I'm going to call this VS2. And the polarities of VS1 and VS2 are completely arbitrary. They happen to follow the passive sign convention, but I could just easily have written them the other way around. It would not have made one bit of difference. So I have picked my voltage variables. Now let's go and let's select the voltage drops for the resistors. So in this case for IA through this 10 ohm resistor, IA alone is flowing through there. So the current, the direction of the current sits that. IC, the passive sign convention, sits that voltage drop. In this case, I've got IA entering the top and IB entering the bottom. So again, IA and IB are opposite directions. So I'm just going to arbitrarily pick that voltage drop across that resistor. Doesn't make a bit of difference if, which way I pick the voltage drop. Okay? Now let's go through and let's write our KVL equations. Now, Let's first go through, I'm going to do the IB and the IC equations first. And then we're going to come back to the IA equation, and there's a good reason for that. So let's do KVL plus Ohm's law. So for IB, for my IB mesh, going around clockwise, this is a rise, and that rise is 5. IA minus IB. So keep in mind, here's your 5 ohm resistor. IA's entering the top. IB's entering the bottom. If I pick a voltage like that across the resistor, I've got to make IB go in the same direction. It's got to be minus IB. So the voltage is 5 times IA minus IB. That's my rise. Then I've got a drop of 10 plus VS2, another drop. So 5IA IA minus IB is equal to 10 plus VS2. My IC mesh, in this case going clockwise around, VS1 is a rise. Or pardon me, VS2 is a rise. And that will be equal to 6IC. That's a drop. Now let's consider the IA mesh. I'm going to write that one last. And I'm going to do that one with a different color. And as you guys are going to see, there's a reason for that. 
Okay. So in this case, going around, Vs1 is a drop. 10Ia is a drop. And 5Ia minus Ib is a drop. Okay, darken this up just a little bit. All right, now let's consider something else. I said in order to write the KVL equations, I need to define a voltage variable across any current source, which is true. But there's something else that current sources do too. Remember how voltage sources constrain nodes in nodal analysis? Current sources constrain meshes. If a current source is on the edge of a mesh, then the current source value sets the mesh value. It actually defines the mesh value. So a current source on the edge of a mesh defines the mesh current. Look at this. Ia, two amps. Clearly those are the same two currents. There is a constraint. And that constraint is that Ia is equal to two amps. That's our first constraint. Then there's a second constraint. A current source that spans two meshes constrains those two mesh currents with respect to each other. So in this case, I've got one amp. It is, this one amp source is spanning those two mesh currents. So we look at this. Here's one amp. I've got IB flowing in the same direction as the one amp source. I've got IC flowing in the opposite direction. Well, you know, couldn't I do exactly what I've already done? Can't I flip this around and call that minus IC. So what's the relationship now between IB and IC? In this case, IB minus IC must be equal to one amp. So there's another constraint equation. Okay, I've got five equations now. So we had IA, IB, IC, three currents, VS1 and VS2, two voltages, five variables, five equations. And now I can solve.
So in this case, I can now go and if I solve, what we're going to get is that, let me just write those down. What we will get is that IA is equal to, of course, two, two amps. IB is equal to 0 0.545 amps. IC is equal to minus 0 0.455 amps. VS2 is then equal to minus 2.727 volts. And so now I can go through and I can solve. Here are my answers. Now, why did I write the IA in blue? Well, let's think about this for just a second. We note this was a defined mesh because of that constraint. So IA is a defined current. Remember we said that you don't need in modal analysis to write a KCL equation for a defined node? Same thing here. You don't need a KVL equation for a defined mesh. So this KVL equation is optional. This KVL equation is only needed if we need to calculate VS1. Think about this for a moment. What if I had excluded this? I would drop an equation, but I'd also drop a variable. So if I had not written IA, if I just stuck with my constraint because it was a defined mesh, I would, in this case, have four equations and four unknowns. IA, IB, IC, and VS2. And that's all I would be able to solve for. That's all I would need to solve for. So just as a defined node does not need a KVL equation, just, pardon me, just as a defined node does not need a KCL equation in nodal analysis unless you need to know the current through the voltage source, in mesh analysis you do not need a KVL equation for a defined mesh unless you want to know the voltage across the current source. So notice how I'm flipping the words around, right? So same kind of concept, but we're swapping voltages for currents. As I said before, nodal and mesh analysis tend to be mathematical duels of each other in terms of how you write the equations and how you write the rules. So in nodal analysis, voltage sources could create constraints against nodes. You need to define the unknown current through a voltage source. In mesh analysis, mesh currents Pardon me, the, the current sources constrain mesh currents, but at the same time you need to define an unknown voltage across those current sources in order to solve. So just flipping it around. Okay, so that is in a nutshell mesh analysis. Next time we're going to take a little, take a little, uh, a little uh, investigation at another concept or another analysis technique you'll see in the book. Remember supernodes? How I said that you can always solve a circuit without using the supernode? Well, if you look in the book, the book also talks about supermeshes. So next time, let's look at this same problem and consider how we can apply the concept of a supermesh to it and solve it.